Welcome to Denimax 18 Starter Package. The Starter Package is a perfect option for you offices who aren't ready to give up on your paper charting yet, or if you need some stepping stones to help move to an electronic practice management system. The data you enter into the Starter Package is your building blocks for a fully digital office. This package will allow you and your staff to manage patient data, basic scheduling, recall management, claims, billing, and reports. This is also a great option for oral surgeons who want to do medical and dental billing but tend to not use the charting function. Denimax is a point-and-click system, so you'll find all of the different functions built in throughout the program just a click away. For example, we have your patient list, your scheduler, prescriptions, ledger, claims list, payments list, and reports as static options at the top of the screen. The left-hand side of the screen is, of course, your options menu, and you'll only have options that pertain to the screen you're in and the function you're trying to perform. You'll also find some extra features under the toolbar at the top of your screen, under your list menu, as well as your activities menu. Dentamax does have a built-in help menu either from the help button in your toolbar or the question mark in the top right corner of the screen. The settings screen is here in the top right corner as well. Once you've opened a screen, you can easily go back to your previous screen by using your back button or clicking on the dynamic drop-down arrow to jump to a particular screen that you already have open or move forward once again to a screen that you may have already opened. You can always go back to your home page by clicking the home button, which is where you begin when you open the program. The home page is designed to be a shortcut screen to give you quick links to different parts of the program that you may access frequently or other handy resources that you may want to use on a regular basis. It can also be used to organize different pieces of information that you want to have handy in one spot for regularly working claims, for example, or your recall. We've also created a category for you for your monthly reports, daily activities, common reports that you might use, other helpful resources, web links, which will be links to other websites that you go to frequently, as well as some basic Dentamax training videos. This homepage is totally customizable, so you can have different sections for the different roles or staff in your office and the functions they may perform, or you may want to just add to the list that we have going already. To begin our demonstration of the starter package, I'm going to select the scheduler button at the top of my screen. With a single left click, it's going to open my schedule on whatever day today's date is automatically. You'll notice that I have three distinct columns on my schedule, and you can have as many or as few columns as you'd like to. And you may also double book each of these columns that you have on your schedule. I also have my schedule set in 10 minute intervals, and you can have any time designation that you'd like as well. We do have an interactive calendar here in the top left corner of the screen where you can go forward one month at a time or a year at a time, back a month or back a year. You can also click on the month and jump directly to the month you'd like to go to, or click on the year and go to a specific year. At the bottom of the scheduler, we have a handy Go to Today button that will always take you back to today's date, plus 14 days forward, plus 90 days forward, and plus six months forward for easy recall scheduling. In addition to clicking on the date you'd like to go to on the schedule, you can also use your plus or minus key to move forward or backwards one day at a time. The heart of every office tends to be the scheduler. So if a new patient calls, you're most likely already looking at your schedule when you pick up the phone as a front office person. So when we have that new patient call in, we can simply ask for their name and double click on a time slot to choose an opening on the schedule. If I have, for example, an Edith Jones that calls me, I can check in my patient list 
by starting to type in the first three letters of the last name, which would be Jones. You'll notice nothing is highlighted in my patient list, either by chart number, first name, or last name, which indicates to me that I do not have an Edith Jones in my program. That confirms that this is a new patient for me, so I can simply delete out the couple of characters that I've typed in for the patient search field and skip past that and begin gathering information from Edith. You can use your tab or your enter button to move through these different fields easily, or of course you can use your mouse. The system formats telephone numbers for you, so there's no need to put in dashes or spaces. You can also assign appointment colors to the appointments on the schedule, and we have 20 colors in the system that you can customize and choose a heading for. I have new patients in my system set as purple. You can also indicate right here whether or not the patient is confirming their appointment with you or if you need to leave them unconfirmed to try and call them for a confirmation later down the road. The right half of the screen is showing you what column you've scheduled the patient in, what provider you're scheduling the patient with, the date and the time of the appointment, and you can also increase the length of the appointment based on how much time you may need for that patient. You do have the option for plugging in an email address for the patient and launching your email right from this button that we have on the screen. If you'd like to send your patient an electronic welcome packet, simply type out the subject and add your attachments to your email and the body of your email and send it off right from here. We do also have the option for Dentamax texting. So if you've collected a cell phone or a mobile number from your patient and you do have the Dentamax texting feature active, you can click on the texting icon to prompt you to send a direct text message over to your patient. Aside from direct two-way texting with your patient, Denimax Texting does also offer automated appointment confirmations, recall notices, and birthday texts to better communicate with your patients. Back on the appointment, you do have a note space in which you can enter any details about this new patient. For example, Edith is coming in for us to check a tooth. On the upper left side of her mouth that she believes may have cracked. You can also note if there's any pre-medication necessary for this patient or any allergies before she walks in the door that you need to be prepared for. If Edith happens to be in pain we can place her on our ASAP list which adds her appointment to our ASAP list on our list menu in case we do get an opening sooner we have a list of appointments that we can use as resources to help fill our schedule and take care of our patients more quickly. The bottom of the appointment is where we can indicate what service codes or procedure codes the patient is coming in for that day. In your options menu, you do have a service codes section with several options. For a new patient, you can either add new treatment items one code at a time, or you can use our easy button and add from a multi-code in the system. Multi-codes are combinations of different procedure codes that you might group together frequently in order to quickly and easily schedule a patient appointment or do your patient charting if you're on one of our other package versions. Because Edith is a new patient, I'm going to go ahead and choose our new patient appointment with FMX as the procedures that I'm scheduling her for. Those automatically now get added to her appointment with our appropriate fees, and I can give her a total over the phone as to how much money she might be expected to pay if she is not an insured patient. Multi-codes are customizable, and you can make as many of those as you'd like as well. At this point, I'm gonna go ahead and save my changes for this new patient appointment. Here on the appointment, you can see several pieces of information, such as the phone numbers, the date and time the appointment got created, information as to what the patient's coming in for, and then the notes that I added to the appointment. This blue sheet of paper 
in the top corner of the appointment is indicating to me that this is a new patient appointment that does not have an official record created as of yet. In most offices, that record does get created when the patient shows up for their first appointment, and in some cases, you may want to create that patient record sooner. If you prefer to create the patient record first for new patients and then schedule their appointment, you may do so by going to your patient list, searching for your patient here to determine whether or not they're a new or existing patient, and once you determine they're a new patient, you can simply click New Patient from your Options menu and create their file first. I'm going to go back to our previous screen, which is our scheduler. And I do want to point out that the system is automatically creating a chart number for this patient. And it's the first three letters of their last name and the first few characters of their first name as well. There is a setting in the system to hide that patient's name and use the chart number but if you're not worried about HIPAA because of the placement of your monitors throughout the office, you can go ahead and display the patient's full name instead of the chart number. You'll also notice that I do get a pop-up on the screen when I hover over this appointment, and it's the same details that are tied to this patient's appointment that we can see by looking at the appointment. The reason we've done that is because sometimes you have an appointment that's a short 20 to 30 minutes and you may not see all the appointment details just by looking at the schedule. So if you take your mouse and simply hover over the appointment, you'll see all of that same appointment information that you would get if this appointment was longer. Another thing I want to point out, this little check mark here is indicating that this appointment happens to be confirmed and I'll show you the other statuses of the appointment as well and how those show up in that place and that there is notes tied to this appointment. If you do click on the note box, it does allow you just to read the notes or even add to the notes attached to this appointment instead of having to open up the appointment in full to add more notes to it. You can easily shrink or expand the appointment by clicking at the bottom of the appointment and dragging your cursor up or down while you hold the left click down. You can also click on the name bar and when you get the four-way arrow on your screen you can left click and hold your mouse down to move the appointment side to side or up or down on today's date. For additional appointment options you can right click on the appointment once you have it selected and blue is the color in our system showing you you've selected something. So if you'll notice, there's this blue halo all the way around this appointment indicating that I've chosen that appointment to work with. The extra options that I got by right-clicking is to delete the appointment, add it to the clipboard for easy moving, create our patient file, check insurance eligibility, copy the appointment, or you can also cut and paste the appointment. We can see this appointment's been marked as an ASAP appointment. You can, of course, print your schedule out, and then you can change the status of the appointment to checked in when the patient arrives and they're filling out their new patient paperwork, or if they brought it in already filled out and they're ready to be seen, you can go ahead and mark the patient ready right away. Now that we've got our patient here and they're ready to be seen, I'm going to go ahead and create their patient file. Once again, I can right click and select create the patient file or in my options menu under patient information, go ahead and click create the patient file. If you've not selected the appointment yet, you won't see that as an option to create the file because there's no patient chosen. Once I select create the patient file, it pulls all of the data from the appointment onto their patient information screen and the name of the screen that you're in is always listed at the top of your screen. You can also see the patient's name that I'm working on at this point. The system automatically assigns the official chart number to the patient. You do have a place for nickname. And one of the things I think is really important to point out is head of household. The head of household in our system is a separate field or entity than the subscriber of the patient's insurance. This means it makes it really easy to bill one person for the account while billing another person's insurance based on the subscriber of that patient's insurance. 
Also, we connect family members in our system via the head of household button. So if Edith was part of another family that I failed to recognize at the time I created her appointment and her patient file, all I have to do is to connect her to another family is deselect self as the responsible party and choose from our patient list who is responsible for paying the bill for Edith and also who's part of her family. For the purpose of this video today, I'm going to go ahead and leave the information as self for Edith as being the head of household. We can go ahead and fill in her street address here and the system will automatically skip past the city and state in case it does know that. So you can fill in the postal code or zip code first and it will auto populate the city and state for you unless it doesn't have that postal code memorized yet in which case the first time you enter it it'll go ahead and automatically save from that point forward. We've already collected her emails and other phone numbers so we're just going to fill in the gaps for whatever information we might be missing from just simply making the appointment over the phone. In the bottom left corner of the screen we do have the option to mark the patient as a recall patient and indicate once we've established it how often the patient needs to be seen and what their frequency is for recall visits. You will notice that the notes from the appointment did pull over onto her patient information screen when we created her patient file. That is the only time that the appointment notes will come over to the patient notes. Otherwise, each appointment note is specific to only the appointment it's attached to. You are able to replace these notes with some standing notes that may be more relevant. In the alerts box, you do have a free form space where you can type out anything that's super important that you want to pop up at you when you open that patient's file or record. Any appointments that the patient does have will be listed here, and this is an interactive appointment, so if I double click on it, it'll take me directly to the scheduler. But first, I do get a warning that I've not saved the data that I entered onto the screen, and the system will automatically prompt you when you're trying to move forward to a different screen without saving your changes. So you do have the option to save them now, discard your changes or cancel, bookmark your screen to save your place, or return to the screen and continue making changes. The bookmarking feature can be automatically prompted in this screen or in the bottom left corner of Dentamax, you will always have the option to bookmark the window you're working on. The bookmark feature works just like a bookmark in a paper book. So it helps you hold your spot that you're in, move on to something else, and when you need to, go back and select that bookmark and pick up right where you left off. Since I clicked Save Changes, the system automatically takes me to and selects the patient's scheduled appointment. I'm going to go back to their patient information screen and continue filling out their information there. And next, I want to point out that if the patient did have any family members in the system, they would show up here along with their age and their designation if they're the head of household. Moving along, you can set an assigned provider for the patient, an assigned hygienist for the patient based on preferences, student status, and what school they may be attending, an employer if that's relevant, a facility if the patient belongs to a specific facility, and then you also have the option to not send the patient a bill or to tag them with a specific billing code if there's a certain type of bill you want to generate for that patient every time. You will also get a snapshot of the patient's balance and when their last statement was sent here as well. On the right half of the screen, you'll have an option to load a patient photo to this space. So if we go to our options menu, we can click load patient picture and choose a photo from our computer already or if you have a webcam you can go ahead and click acquire patient picture and take your patient photo. You will be able to see the patient's missed appointments if they've had any, their real-time insurance eligibility if you've activated that feature, and any current lab cases that they might have in the system. At the top of the screen we have a feature for 
deceased patients, which will inactivate your patient and add a medical alert that they are deceased. You can also mark the patient a VIP patient if you want to hide some of their patient information and only allow certain staff members to see that confidential information. Or if the patient's only in your system for billing purposes, you can mark them not a patient as well. The next tab over is insurance information. Our system allows you to enter primary and secondary insurance here on the insurance tab. If they don't have any insurance, go ahead and skip this tab entirely and move on to the medical alerts. If they do have insurance, you can go ahead and indicate what the relationship is to the subscriber of the insurance plan and then which insurance plan they do have. In this screen, you will be able to see not only the name of the insurance company and the billing location of the claim, but also the group name and group number in case you already have their plan in the system. If I'm looking for a Cigna plan and I start to type Cigna, it'll take me to the start of my Cigna insurance plans. And if I don't happen to find the appropriate insurance plan for this patient, I can add it in on the fly by clicking this magnifying glass to the right. Anytime you see a magnifying glass, it's going to open up the master list of, of that particular field when you click on it. So when I clicked on that, it opened the master list of insurance plans. Once you're in the master list, you'll always have the option to create something new, delete an item, or edit an item, or simply search a little bit deeper and select the plan you want once you find it. You'll always have additional search options once you click that magnifying glass as well, and those are customizable. If you'll notice at the top of my insurance plan screen, we have the option to search by insurance company name, group number, employer, or phone. Perhaps I'd like to also search by group name or have that as an option. So if I go to my options menu on the left, I can customize my filter, which are your search options, and select any other option to search by. I'm going to go ahead and choose group name as another option and then simply click the OK button. Now on my screen I have the ability to search by group name for the insurance company that I'm looking for. Let's just suppose that Edith works at Disney and my group name for the Disney plan is going to be Disney Plus. By entering Disney Plus in my search space and no data populating, that tells me that I don't have that insurance plan on file. I know Disney Plus is through Cigna, and I do happen to have a few different Cigna options already in my system, and I do know that that claim needs to go to the Chattanooga address. So instead of clicking New Insurance Plan and creating one from scratch, I can select an existing plan on file that's similar to what I want and click Copy This Plan to save myself a little bit of time. The system automatically creates a duplicate of that insurance plan minus the group name and group number and it has it selected already for me to easily click edit insurance plan and add in a new group name and group number to the copied plan. In our system, if you're contracted with an insurance plan, you can enter their fee schedules and then simply select the fee schedule that you want to show up on the patient's ledger based on that allowed or contracted fee. So here I'm going to choose Cigna as the fee schedule that I want the software to calculate what the patient owes money based off of, and also that'll be the fee schedule that shows up on the patient's ledger since we're not allowed to charge them more. That eliminates me having to manually add write-offs to the system, but on the patient's treatment plan estimate, it still gives me the flexibility to show our office fee and the insurance contracted fee so the patient understands the benefit they're receiving by going to an in-network provider. I do also have a space for the fee schedule that goes out on the claim form that we submit to Cigna, and I have that set to be our UCR or our office fees. For those of you offices who are doing ICD-9 or ICD-10 billing, you do have the option to select which type of coding this insurance plan is allowed to accept. At the bottom of the screen, I can add in any general limitation information about this insurance plan. 
that I want to keep track of as the patient comes in and we need to reference that information either from their patient information screen or from their ledger. The next tab at the top of our insurance plan is our coverage tab where we can enter in relevant deductibles, renewal months for their insurance plan, and annual maximums. You can also edit the default coverage table as part of the setup if you want every default coverage to table to have more specific information or on the plan level only per insurance plan. For example, I'm going to go ahead and indicate that basic restorative procedures for this patient are covered at 90% with no deductible and crowns are covered at 60% with the standard deductible applied. The next tab at the top is to serve as a blue booking feature for you to store payment history for this particular group with Cigna. So as the patient continues to be seen and we begin to build up some history with our Disney plan, we'll actually have specific codes listed in here and the dollar amount that the insurance company paid us per code. This is really handy when it comes to any downgrades that that insurance plan may do or just keeping tabs of the payment history. The next tab over at the top is our frequency details tab. This allows you to enter specific codes and how often they may be covered. This way you don't have to type out a free form note for every insurance plan for the different types of exams that have coverage. You can simply add the code and add a note to it here. Once you're done entering the frequency and limitations of that insurance plan that you'd like, go ahead and save your changes. And now we've created our new Disney Plus plan that we could simply select to attach to the patient. From there, we're simply going to enter their subscriber ID number. If there's secondary insurance involved, go ahead and enter it exactly as we did the primary. If the subscriber of the insurance plan is somebody else other than the patient, make sure that person is in the system first before you try to select them as the subscriber of the plan. Once you do have them entered, you can then just simply select the person that is the subscriber of the insurance and save your changes. The next tab over is our medical alerts. Any issues the patient may have or allergies, you can go ahead and select from the list, which is customizable as well. That also becomes part of the medical alert pop-up that we'll see when we open the patient's file. The next tab is extra information, which is customizable. You do also have a space for emergency contact information, as well as referral sources as to how the patient found you. We do also have corresponding reports for the referring providers, patient referrals, and general referral sources. So if you do any marketing, you can make sure that your marketing efforts are paying off or just generate a list of patients that you might want to thank for their referrals. The last tab at the top is missing teeth, which you can indicate here in order to populate the missing teeth on your insurance claim form and start to build that clinical record in case you plan to transition to a package that we offer that does include our clinical charting. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and save our changes for this new patient we've created. And now we can see that blue sheet of paper for this patient's appointment is gone. We do have a treatment plan attached to the patient and also medical alerts. If you need to edit any of the details on the appointment as far as what the patient was seen for today, you can simply double click on the appointment and select an item to edit, remove, or add new items to the patient's appointment. You can also print out the patient's treatment plan estimate from this TX icon here on your screen. We do have two different options for the treatment plan estimate, and one of those is the standard fee option, which will include your office fee, the insurance fee, the patient's portion, and the insurance portion on the treatment plan. It does have a total section at the bottom to indicate if there's deductibles as well and how much the patient's portion is, and a spot for a patient's signature once you've printed this out. At this point, let's suppose the patient's been seen and we're ready to check the patient out. To do so, I simply right-click on the appointment and change the status of the appointment to complete. 
We do have a hotkey of F2 as well, so if you select the appointment and hit your F2 button, that'll also bring you to the post-appointment transaction screen that we're in now. This screen gives you the option to simply select the items from their treatment plan that you did actually perform today and post those selected items to their ledger. You do still have an opportunity to edit any of these transactions, add new transactions, or delete them if they were simply unnecessary. We're going to go ahead and post all of the items, and that automatically prompts us to schedule the patient's recall appointment if they've been marked as a recall patient and they do not have a recall appointment already on the schedule. This is what we call our recall details screen. The recall details will let you see only the recall codes that you have selected. It'll let you see the last and previous two dates that the patient has had recall for, has been recalled for those specific codes. And it will also allow you to read the frequency detail that you've entered in on those particular codes. At the bottom of the screen, you'll also get a snapshot of the insurance notes for any limitations that their plan may have, so you're better informed. And you do have a space to enter any recall notes that you need to, such as the patient's preference for scheduling times, or if they're gonna be out of town for a while, or if they like to be scheduled with their other family members. Because I know that we've posted their complete series of x-rays or FMX today, I can see that the date last taken was today. If I need to enter a previous date of service on any of these other items as well, because I know when the patient had seen another dentist, I can go ahead and enter that history here as well by right-clicking and selecting Add a Date and put in their previous date's history. You can manually enter up to three dates of previous history. Once I'm done reviewing the information and deciding what procedure codes we want to schedule the patient for, for their next recall visit or their first recall visit in this case, I can go ahead and select the codes that I'd like for their appointment and click the Schedule Now function. If I select Schedule Later, the system will remember the items I've selected that they need to be scheduled for when we do get them on the phone to make that appointment. If we go ahead and click Schedule Now, the system will take us out to the date that the patient is due for their recall visit based on the date they were last seen for recall and the frequency that we've added to their patient information screen. At that point, you can begin offering the patient different appointment options that they may want to take. Once they've decided upon an option, simply drag and drop their appointment into that space. Now that we've got our patient scheduled for their appointment, we can go ahead and handle their billing simply by clicking on ledger at the top of the screen and loading the ledger for review. Once again, I do want to point out that you can see the contracted fees that we have with Cigna. So we don't have to worry about accidentally overbilling the patient because this is the allowable amount. We do also get a few snapshot of details here, such as what the annual maximum is for the patient and what we estimate to use out of that max and what the remaining portion may be. So if they have a treatment plan we need to present, we'll have some of that information at our fingertips, as well as whether or not they've met their deductible and how much is remaining and what their pending balance is. This middle box indicates what their total account balance is, and the billing information box indicates who we're billing and how much money we should expect from each billing entity or person. So in this scenario, because we're doing preventative procedures for the patient and those are covered at 100%, we're estimating Cigna to pick up the full 148.75 and that our patient Edith Jones should owe nothing from today's appointment. To verify the insurance details, the insurance plan is a hyperlink, so we can simply click on the word Cigna to open up their insurance plan and verify the coverage breakdown. Going back here for a moment, I wanna point out that you do also have a hyperlink to the patient's information screen here. 
and also a hyperlink to the head of household, which also happens to be our patient here. Our system does line item accounting, so we can see the amount we're charging for each specific procedure code. We'll be able to see how much the patient has paid towards each code or the insurance has paid, any patient adjustments or discounts or insurance adjustments if there were any necessary. Then lastly, we can see the balance per each item listed here as well. The next step in the process, since our patient seemingly owes nothing, is to create our claim, which I'll do from our options menu by selecting Create Claim. And we can go ahead and view this claim now to verify the details, or we can view it later in our claim screen. The next step would be to create the patient's treatment plan if there were any necessary, which we can do by clicking View Planned Items down here at the bottom of our ledger and we can go ahead and hide the items that we've completed for the patient so far. We can see that the patient does have a treatment plan for their Profi and of course the oral hygiene instruction that we scheduled for their future appointment, but if there's anything else I need to create a treatment plan for, I can go to my options menu and click new transaction and add that to the patient profile. Because I don't have a date that we're scheduling these items yet, I'm gonna go ahead and clear the date out and just start entering the procedures that we need to treatment plan for. For example, a filling on tooth number eight in sizal surface. And I'm gonna go ahead and mark that as a planned item instead of completed. And I do wanna point out that you have the option to use diagnosis codes on any of the procedures that we're entering as well, if by chance we're going to be submitting anything to medical insurance. Now that I've got number eight added here, I'm gonna go ahead and click Save and New, and also add a crown for the patient on tooth number 14. Click Save and New, and add a buildup as well for tooth number 14. If by chance I don't know the code that I'm searching for, I can access the master list of codes by clicking the magnifying glass next to the code field. Once I've opened the master list of codes, I can search by a number of different options, just like our insurance plan list. In this case, I would search by service classification, which seems to be the most direct route for myself. Now I'm going to double click to select my code. And once again, I would add my tooth number and save my changes when I'm done entering a treatment plan. You can now create a pre-authorization from this screen if you needed to send this out to the insurance company to see what they're going to cover. And that would generate exactly as a standard claim would. Once you select create pretreatment claim or create a pretreatment claim for selected items. I'm going to go ahead and jump back to our completed items now by toggling down here at the bottom of my screen back to the ledger. At the end of our workday, we're going to go ahead over to our claims list. Since we've dismissed our patient after creating their claim, not collecting a patient portion since it didn't show they owed any, and scheduling their next visit. I do have Edith's claim here in my system ready to be billed out, and I can double click on that claim to open it up for viewing and NEA information if we need to add any electronic attachments. This claim form is interactive, so if there were a remark or some other information that I needed to type into here, we can simply by clicking and typing. You do have multiple tabs at the top which will allow you to edit the claim, view additional patient information, or make changes to patient information in case you are missing something, verify if the claim has passed our validation process, and if not, why not? as well as indicate any other prior placements or replacements that we're entering, any enclosures, and once again, add any attachments directly through our NEA integration if needed. If you are sending electronic claims, you can simply click Send eClaims at the end of your day, and your claim will go out to the clearinghouse partner that you've subscribed to. I'm going to go ahead and print our selected claim
Once your claim has been sent, the system will automatically mark the claim as having been billed out, and you can close the screen and wait for your payment. I do want to point out once you've created and sent your claim that you will have a notice on the ledger based on the date the claim went out, and you can hover over that to get a tooltip to show you how much got billed out on the claim. And I also want to point out that the total of these two procedures for our office fee was 175, and that's what went out on the claim, versus what the total is on our patient's ledger, which is our contracted allowed amount. Once we do receive that insurance payment in from the insurance company, and post an individual check from the patient's ledger, or we can go to the payment screen and post a bulk check from our payment screen. I'm going to show you how to post from the ledger, which ultimately takes you to the same screen as if we went through the payment screen as well. So under enter a payment, I'm going to click new insurance payment. From here, I'm going to go ahead and enter our check number from the insurance company and how much they paid us and then I'm going to distribute that money to the patient's ledger. We do line item accounting, so basically our accounting system works exactly like an EOB would read. You'll have your date of service, claim number, procedure code, the amount that you billed out, and then you'll have the option to enter the payment per each item, any deductibles if they apply, and any write-offs if necessary. I'm going to say that the insurance paid us $60 towards this first item based on what the EOB says and $70 towards the second item based on what the EOB says. If you got paid differently than what you were expecting, you can mark the item as a follow-up item if you're not ready to close your claim and need to do some investigation, or if that should be the amount you're getting paid and you want the system to remember that in the blue book or payment history, simply select the green dot to update the payment history to the new dollar amount. You can also add a billing note to any of these items to show up on the patient's ledger if you need to add a little explanation when you're mailing the patient a statement. You can use a default billing note from the system, or you can create one on the fly based on what you want to communicate to that patient. Once you're done laying the money out where it's expected to go based on what the EOB says, in your options menu, simply click Post Payments and close your screen. It'll show you that one claim has now been marked as paid, and you can verify that you did distribute the full amount of the check that you've received. This will help you keep track of your accounting instead of having mistakes at the end of the day. Once we get back to the ledger, you do have a summary view that you can look at and read across the line where it shows what you billed out, what got paid, and any adjustments and the balance left over, or we have a detailed view as well, which actually shows you the date of the check received, what type of payment it was that was received, and if it's part of another payment, then it'll show you, if it's a breakdown of part of another payment, this little tooltip will show you how much the total payment was that was posted on that date of service, posted on that date. So this note is showing me that this $70 belongs to a larger payment of $130 that was made today. I can also see that this $60 is also part of that $130 payment. I do also see my note that I created against this procedure code that we have for the patient, and that is set to print out on the patient's statement when we mail it to them. The patient does have an account balance of $18.75 left over now, which since we've closed the claim has moved on to be the patient's portion. And I know that balance is coming from $15 from the FMX left over and $3.75 from our exam. If I go to my options menu and click print walkout or print statement, I can generate a statement in which to bill the patient from. Our system has multiple kinds of statements in it, 
so that you can choose what kind of statement you want to send to the patient based on how your office collects money. You'll either collect the anticipated patient portion while the patient is in-house, the responsible patient portion after the insurance pays, or you might collect the full fee from the patient and let the insurance reimburse the patient if you're a cash office. Here's an example of our standard statement. It simply shows what the fee is that was charged, any payments that were made and by whom, and what the balance is left over per item, as well as a total aging statement at the bottom and a clear amount of balance due. Let's suppose we've received our patient's payment in and we're going to go ahead and post that to the patient's account. We've agreed with that patient to write off the $3.75 since it was our error that we had misbilled. So I'm going to go under Enter a Payment and click Add Patient Payment and Adjustment. Choose my payment method that the patient submitted to me. Put in the amount that the patient's paying and make sure that, that payment amount went to the right line item. Because I'm writing off the $3.75 for this other item, in the adjustment column, I'm simply going to type $3.75. If I have a specific adjustment code that I want to use for an explanation for that $3.75, I can simply choose my adjustment code first and then type in the dollar value. You do also have the option in some cases that may be more appropriate to do a flat percentage write-off or adjustment for the patient, in which case you're going to right-click and do a discount by any custom percent that you enter. The system will automatically calculate what that dollar amount is based on the percentage you've entered. Once you have your money laid out on the ledger how you'd like to, you're going to go ahead and save your changes. I do want to point out before I leave this screen that we have a few different viewing options that you can choose on how you're seeing this screen. You can choose to hide the zero balance charges on the patient's ledger. So when you get to the payment screen, all you have left here are the items that actually have a balance. And then you're also able to post money to the whole family at the same time, or you can focus on just the individual you're working with. Let's go ahead and save our changes. And now on the patient's ledger in the detailed view, we can see what type of payment the patient made and if it's part of another payment or not. For the adjustment, we do see what kind of courtesy we've given that patient or discount. And at the top of our screen, we can now see they have a zero balance and each item under our balance column also has a zero balance. There's a few side notes that I do want to mention as well about the system. So anytime the patient changes insurance and you've updated their patient information screen, the first new charge that you add to the patient's ledger will automatically prompt a new billing or a new ledger to be created for that patient. Therefore, you'll be able to see the insurance history for that patient here under the different billings and any pending items per insurance plan. So our system will allow you to retain the history of the different insurance plans for easy rebilling. You can also name these billings in case you have one set of billing information and charges going to a patient's standard insurance plan, and you have another set of billing or charges going to the patient's medical insurance, or perhaps even getting billed to an attorney due to an injury or auto accident that may have occurred that should be billed separately from their standard procedures. At the end of the day, all we have left to do is go ahead and run our report, such as our day sheet and deposit slip. At the top of the screen, I'm going to click on reports and double click day sheet from our reports list and then deposit slip, or we can go to our homepage and run our daily activities list. Here's what our day sheet looks like for today. We have many different varieties of reports, and we also have a custom report writer in case there's anything that you want that's very specific to your practice.
Going back to our schedule, you can now see that the patient's appointment has been totally checked out. We've billed the insurance, collected payment, and sent them a statement, as well as collecting our patient portion. A couple other features, now that we're back on the schedule, that I'd like to point out is that every patient in our system does have a patient journal, which is a running accumulation of contact notes for that person. I pulled up the journal by clicking F11, or you can go to the Activities menu and open your patient journal there. And I'm going to go ahead and title this entry Treatment Plan and make a note about our treatment plan conversation. You can also create and assign tasks to different staff members in the system or create a reminder for yourself by clicking F12 or going to the list menu and pulling up your task list window. Once the task list is pulled up, you can right click and create a new task and set your reminder. You can also assign a priority, a specific staff member, and a due date to these items. Once that item's been accomplished, simply right-click on it and mark it complete. So that's a great way to keep yourself and your staff organized. I'd like to thank you for joining me today on the review of the Dentamax Starter Package and invite you to give us a call if you have any questions. Keep in mind that we do have a couple other packages as well that you can choose from depending on the needs of your office. So if you didn't see something that you were interested in today, please make sure to contact us at 1-800-704-8494 or at sales at Thank you.